stairs of life, let Christians say, the cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises sing, love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship here on YouTube. Whether you are worshiping with us during the premiere at 10 a.m. on Easter morning, or whether you are joining us at a later date or time. Because God is beyond all space and time, we trust that God has gathered all of us in this particular way to celebrate together Christ's victory over death, to hear again God's words of promise for us, for each one of us in this worshiping community. I hope you have found ways to make your worship space festive this morning, whether you are wearing your brightest pair of pajamas your fanciest sparkling gown, or whether your worship is accompanied by the lighting of birthday candles, or is accompanied by chocolate or jelly bean treats. However, you are marking this Easter celebration. You are welcome here. Our worship continues at the font with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. 
Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. God of mercy, Jesus suffered death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of heavenly forces will prepare for all peoples a rich feast, a feast of choice wines, of select foods rich in flavor, of choice wines well refined. He will swallow up on this mountain the veil that is veiling all peoples, the shroud enshrouding all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Lord God will wipe tears from every face. He will remove his people's disgrace from off the whole earth, for the, Lord, for the Lord has spoken. They will say on that day, look, this is our God from, for whom we have waited, and he has saved us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited, Let's be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. The Lord was my strength and protection. He was my saving help. The sounds of joyful songs and deliverance are heard in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. The Lord's strong hand is ready to strike. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. I won't die, no, I will live, and declare what the Lord has done. 
Yes, the Lord definitely disciplined me, but he didn't hand me over to death. Open the gates of righteousness so I can go in and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. Acts 10, 34 to 43. Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism John preached? You know about Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled around doing good and healing everyone oppressed by the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God chose beforehand, who ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify, testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus's dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. <laughs> Then
They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God chose beforehand. Said the night wind to the little lamb, do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. As I was pondering our scriptures for this Easter morning, this Christmas song popped into my head. Do you see what I see? And I guess I'd never noticed in that Christmas song that this first verse is sung by the wind to a sheep. So some artistic license has been taken. Some suspension of disbelief is required. Of course, the point of that song isn't the wind or the lamb or the star. The point is the birth of the baby who will bring us goodness and light. But looking at a squirming baby, you might not see the one who will bring peace to people everywhere. Do you see what I see? Of course, you don't see what I see. We aren't even in the same room. Even I don't see what I see. As we worship together this morning, I'm not where I was when I recorded this sermon, or I'm not where I am now as I record this sermon. I'm not in the future, I'm not where I am now. In, in the past, I'm not where, where I am, was. Anyway, do you see what I see? Let me show you what I see. I see an empty sanctuary. It doesn't look like there's much life in this sanctuary, but when I look with the eyes of faith, I see a sanctuary filled with love. I see a sanctuary full, full of love for our neighbors, of love for one another, that we are willing to continue to worship online, that we are willing to forego worshiping in person so that we can assure one another of our health and safety. And this empty sanctuary is a sign of that love. So what do you see? Do you see what I see? I see a sanctuary full of love. I see a congregation rich in online worship experiments. I see readers from multiple families, multiple homes, multiple settings. I see musicians continuing to offer their gifts for our worship life. I see virtual coffee hours where we share richly with one another, where we share our prayers, our hopes, and even our tears. Do you see what I see? At the end of Mark's gospel, we see this resurrection account. We see this group of women going with their spices in the hope that they can somehow use those spices to honor Jesus' body. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? They had spices, but they didn't have a plan. When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. With their eyes of faith, they saw that all they needed was already there. Go and tell, these women heard at the end of this passage. But they fled in terror and silence. 
This gospel of Mark sounds like it ends in failure. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Do you see what I see here? But we know that these women did go and tell, and we know that because this story has been told to us. And so we are the inheritors of this story. We see this story not as a story that ends in failure, but as a story of God who brings strength from weakness, God who brings life where it appears that death has won. Do you see what I see? I see Easter. I see God stronger than death. I see a world in need. And I see a community gifted, ready to go and tell. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Amen. Some of you will recognize today's hymn of the day because we were introduced to it last year, at least in one form. Last year, our very own Brian Gallatin brought us an arrangement of Alleluia Cristo Resucito or Alleluia Christ is Risen. And this year we're using that same arrangement of Brian's, but we're singing along with it this time. So I will invite you to turn in your ELWs to number 375, 375. Alleluia, Cristo resucito. We will sing the refrain in Spanish and the verses in English. Alleluia, Cristo resucito. De madrugada el domingo. Marble, the stone is rolled away. Here from the angel, he is risen. Christ goes before you all the way. Alleluia, Cristo resucitó. De madrugada el domingo. Rise back, Elena, from your weeping. Christ stands before your very eyes. Quickly return to the disciples. Bear the good news, he is alive. Alleluia, Cristo resucitó. Easter jacket. Since I'm wearing my vestments, my clergy robe and stole, you don't get to see the visual splendor of this garment during our worship together. However, this jacket has become an important part of my Easter celebration. These very bright colors remind me that this is a day of great joy. And the jacket itself reminds me of the work that I used to do in helping kids in foster care and their families because I received this jacket during my social work career. But this jacket is pretty loud. 
It wouldn't fit with every outfit. There are events when I definitely would not choose to wear this. The reasons this jacket are important to me aren't necessarily obvious just by looking at it. So why am I telling you about my Easter jacket? And why at this point in our worship service? Well, because this jacket is part of my heritage. It has become an important part of how I celebrate Easter. Next up in our worship, we will explore a part of the church's heritage. We will recite together the Nicene Creed, ancient words that we have not included in our online worship together in quite a while. Since we haven't shared the creed together in so long, it seemed good to pause and ponder why we'd include it on this special day. Perhaps the creed feels foreign to you, or even outdated, like some old suit jacket pulled from the back of the closet. Perhaps the concepts you hear in the creed almost seem to clash with your own theological understandings, or at best, it may seem like a historical curiosity, but not something you'd gravitate toward on your own. And so I'm inviting you to experience the creed in a different way. As we join with Christians across time and space in reciting these ancient words today, I invite you to experience these words not as a faith litmus test or a theological essay, but to approach these words like a work of art. As we attempt to summarize the story of God and God's people, no mere words can capture that story. Let these words serve as a bridge to the great mystery of God's grace and favor that unites all of creation in relationship to God, who created all that is, who became fully human, and who continues to be worshiped and glorified. Let yourself drop into these words like an abstract painting, like a jazz refrain, like a dance. Let this part of our common heritage tell us anew about our salvation in God as we recite together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Creator. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beloved Trinity Worshiping Community, I continue to be so thankful for your generosity of time, of talent, of heart, and of finances, especially in this past year. As we continue to live out the ministry to which God is calling us, 
Your generosity allows us to respond with a hearty yes to the invitations God places before us. If you haven't already, I encourage you to send an Easter contribution to the church office. You can also use your computer to visit our webpage, trinitylutheran.com, and make a contribution through the online giving tab. Thank you for continuing to respond to the blessings of God by blessing others through your support of Trinity Lutheran Church. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work and the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying and those who grieve, assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of the resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. 
fill us with trust that we re that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever hear us O oh god your mercy is great in the hope of new life in christ we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through jesus christ our lord amen Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia.